What is up, amigos? Today we're talking about how the terms intensity of the oncoming flow affects the car's aerodynamics. So in automotive wind tunnels, as we've gone through in other podcasts and other auto aero videos, the terms intensity is usually quite low. It's like between about 0.1 and 1%. So that means if you have a 10, 10 meter per second flow coming onto the car, it might fluctuate between about 9.9 .9 and 10.1 meters per second. It's almost nothing. Compared to on-road conditions, the tone intensity is far greater. So it's between about 5% and even 35% it changes. So a 10 meter per second flow could go between like five meters per second or six meters per second and 14 or 15 minutes per second. That's a huge difference, that fluctuation. So how does that affect the aerodynamics of the car? And if you don't know exactly what the tone intensity is, check out this video here. So there are a few different major effects and unfortunately a lot of these effects are really in a tug of war with each other so the exact effects on for example the drag coefficient the front lift coefficient the rear lift coefficient are a little bit variable but we'll go through all these and discuss why so first of all let's talk about the front here and in particular how that affects the front lift coefficient so as the flow goes over here generally speaking it'll be fluctuating a lot more as i said it could be between six meters per second and 15 meters per second so as a result, there will often be higher fast moving flow going over the top and fast moving flow going underneath. Now, in terms of how that affects the pressures, usually that will mean that the pressure on top drops, as does the pressure underneath. So in terms of the drop on top, that means that we have more lift being produced because the car is being pulled up more. But because we have lower pressure underneath as well, that means we can get more downforce because the car is being sucked to the road. So whether that results in an overall increase for the lift coefficient in the front or a drop really depends on the tug of war between these two regions here. Usually it is an increase and like 80% of the time, the lift coefficient will increase at the front here and that's usually by about five to 10%. Now in terms of the rear, now we have two main effects and one is kind of local, one is more inherited from upstream. The local effect is for this rear window here. And if you don't know about rear window aerodynamics, check out this video here. So what happens is the flow comes over here and it may or may not separate over this rear window, depending on how steep it is. Now from general aerodynamics, not just for cars, but for really anything, we know that if you have a higher terminus intensity level, the flow will more likely stay attached over a steeper angle. So this greater terminus intensity will allow the flow to stay attached over here, which means that we will often get a lower pressure and that means that the rear lift can increase because of this situation here but we have the underbody to consider as well so because we have fast moving flow underneath it means that the diffuser will also can be run at a steeper angle and the flow can stay attached over it at, as well so we have the exact same mechanism happening here underneath as well because the flow is faster it can stay attached that means the flow can be kicked up more and that can actually drop the rear lift coefficient. And again, depending on what happens in terms of whether it increases or decreases, really is decided by this tug of war between the top and the bottom effects. And in reality, generally the rear lift coefficient increases about half the time and the other half of the time it stays pretty constant. And again, it's by about five or so percent. So that's a bit more variable. Now we get to something that is a lot easier to um, consider and that is the drag coefficient. Now the drag coefficient, fortunately, is pretty much a monotonic increase. So the greater the term intensity is, the greater the drag coefficient becomes too. And that is for a couple of main reasons. One reason is that as you get a more a, a dirtier flow, so you get more term intensity in it, it's gonna hit certain objects, for example, the side mirror or the wheels or whatever, you will get bigger wakes and those wakes also spread out more, they diffuse more. And that means that regions downstream of the car, which usually would see cleaner flow, are now seeing this really bad flow. And that results in greater drag being produced from these regions as well. Then you also have the rear as well, which you get a big wake, and that can diffuse again out even more. So more of the base area, the back of the car, is seeing a wake. So that also increases the drag. So like 90% of the time, the drag coefficient will increase. Maybe about 10% of the time, it stays about the same or drops slightly. But overall, it's about a 5 to 15% increase in the drag coefficient. And if you want to learn more about this, check out a few papers, for example, update on the Pinifarina turbulence generation system and its effects on the car aerodynamics and aeroacoustics. 
Also, another good one is vehicle aerodynamic impact of on-road turbulence. And another good one is the effect of high thermostat intensities on surface pressure fluctuations and wake structures of a vehicle model. So that is in this video. If you'd like to make sure to click the like and subscribe buttons. And I'll see you soon. Peace and amigos.